Good day to you guys. Welcome back to my Mumunting channel. For today's video, we will be tackling about my Hyundai items next upgrade, which is this. Oops. 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 Tada! Tada! This. So it's a KYB gas shock absorber. So yeah, this is gonna be an unboxing, install, and a mini review all in one video. So if you like or curious for this kind of video, just stick around. Front side of the box, right side with model codes, the back of the box which is the same as the front, left side is blank, top portion, and the bottom. Now let's unbox this product. Upon opening, you'll be surprised to see that there are no foams, no papers, nor anything that secures the shocks on its place. It's just sitting there so it has a high chance of being damaged when this is tossed around by people who's not careful. On the box is a manual. the shocks itself, and a single nut. KYB branding, XLG. Same, it's just the same in terms of model number. Correct me if I'm wrong. have it folks a pair of KYB gas shock absorbers they come in two different boxes to indicate which is for the left side and which is for the right side you can just simply you can tell by the difference on this part so just a tip if you're gonna install something like this always take one old part first and then compare it to uh, any of these ones so that you will know which is which for that uh, specific um, part of the car. XLG! KYB is a Japanese brand but I don't know guys if you can see but on, the, uh, on this part of this suspension there's an engraved made in Korea written on here. On the back it says made in Korea so if this is legit as the seller claims then it's a win-win. Before we start, I just want to say that this is done by a mechanic somewhere down, the road. somewhere down the road. I was originally planning to do this by myself but since I lacked some tools needed for the procedure and knowing the overall hardships that I would encounter, I just decided to hire a mechanic to do it. Little did I know that day that that mechanic also lacks the proper tools that is needed. As, a, as far as I can recall, he said he has the tools but he did not clarify that he had the right tools or the proper tools needed. So I'm partially also to be blamed for that one. Thankfully, it, it worked as an alternative and I'm also thankful that I gained a new knowledge that day. So if ever you plan to do the same thing to your car, Go to a nice shop that has the proper tools and save yourself from the hassle. By the way, this method of installation has two ways on how you could start with the procedure. First is by removing this massive cover here and also removing the front wipers. Second is by doing the same shit that I'm about to show you. This is by disregarding the top cover and just by reaching out the upper parts of the suspension with your bare hands and tools. For me, this is the fastest but the most tedious thing to do so it's kinda not recommended but still I am about to show you how it's done so that you could at least have, a, have an idea about it first off we have to remove the wheels then remove the single bolt here and another two bolts located on these portions the bolt on top connects the shock absorber to the stabilizer link of the car while the bottom connects it to the brake assembly use a makeshift stand or put anything to hold the brake in its place so that the shock absorber would not suddenly drop when you unbolt the top portion of it. It would be nice to have some kind of clamp, wrench, or a vice grip 
to hold this rod while you are unscrewing the bolts on top of it. Once the bolts are removed, you may now remove the shock absorber, but you might need some minor force to separate this arm that's connected to it. Once removed, if you happen to also have a shock mounting or suspension mounting, now is the time to also include it into the installation so that you won't have to do it again some other time. But if you don't have one yet, just like me, or you just want to reuse your existing one, you can just transfer it by unscrewing the bolt that locks it on its place. A wrench which has an angled end is needed here because of the bolt's location. But an impact wrench and a vice grip would be your best choice to do this job. Yes, it has the manual. Yes, it has the drawings. But it lacks written guidelines. And sometimes I feel that it lacks the specific details for your specific car. This one looks like a manual in general for any types of vehicle. So beginners like me might be confused on understanding the illustration this, uh, depicted on here. Uh, to add more confusion to this manual, I also bought this KYB bump stop kit or sometimes it's called a rubber bumper, front rubber bumper. Here's the serial code and it looks like this. Basing on the catalog, usually it is inserted within the shock absorbers but if I base it on this illustration, I think there's no, there's no drawing or guidelines on where to use it. Maybe it's just me about being clueless about this shock absorbers but things are getting a little bit confusing when you base this on the on their official products catalog this one is posted made specifically for the first gen i10 which is a 2008 to 2014 models here's an illustration but if we base it on this manual i don't think this is correctly indicated here now for the mechanics magical part Usually, there are clamps specifically made to hold these kinds of springs and it is very beneficial to use them when we want to remove springs on the safest way as possible because if we don't keep them compressed, chances are that they would fly off or just even cause some serious injuries. But this mechanic taught me that we can also do a makeshift clamp by using only wires to hold the springs on its place. He makes three sets of ties positioned on three parts around the shocks. Then he twists the ends to lock it. He inserts a screwdriver on the middle of the ties. Then he rolls it to tighten the wire in place. Are you surprised? Shocked? Amazed? Or cringing perhaps? Well, the feeling is mutual. But I wanna take this time to praise him for being ingenious and clever. Because it works as an alternative. Once the springs are kept compressed, you can now safely remove the top plate and rubber cover. Then transfer them onto their new suspension. There are spots here that acts as stoppers where you should align the end of the spring so that it stays on its place. The same goes for the other end of the spring that you would be needing to attach to the top plate. Afterwards, you may now remove the wires in preparation for replacing the suspension back in the car. Once it's done, you can now just align the shock absorber back to its place. Just start by inserting the top portion first before the bottom. Then just reconnect the arm of the brake assembly and the stabilizer ring. Finalize by screwing them together again. As I've said earlier, there would be just some minor agony that we could encounter when trying to screw this suspension back to its place. Since we did a somewhat uh, shortcut method, this is the consequence that the installer or mechanic would deal with. Usually, the first gen item have been plagued with suspension issues. Not because of quality concerns, but with ride comfort and damping issues. But upon upgrading to AKYB, I could already see, I mean, feel the improvement. For example, 
if I happen to encounter this on the road before. In normal cruising speeds, the front of my car shakes in a hard way. It's so hard that you can feel the vibration on your steering wheel and also on my dashboard. But now on this KYB setup and matching with the same speed as before, it glides through them not that harsh anymore. There is some softness or some cushion that you can feel but it is not at par with the level of luxurious suspensions found from the Toyota Camry and Honda Accord. To be brutally honest, it's kind of a one step leap from the stock suspension before but you could really feel the difference or the improvement. For my personal benchmark, I so love my friend's suspension setup on his Mirage G4. So maybe if you guys could test out a Mirage G4 and test it side by side with a with an item, I think you'll catch my drift. By the way, both of them are subcompact cars. If I were to give this a score from a scale of 1 to 7, I'll give this a KYB upgrade a score of 5 and a stock suspension of a Hyundai item would be 4. For my previous comparison, uh, my friend's Mirage G4 which has a stock suspension would be 6. Thank you for watching this video. I know it's kinda troublesome for some people. I just wanted to share to you another creative method on how to replace your car's front suspension. As most of the videos available online uses a much more better approach than what we have shown you. I just hope that you like it somehow and I hope you learned another method just like me. So again guys, thank you for watching, stay safe, avoid toxicity, God bless.